we left off last week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't you love him? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to read and then this is the first verse and then I'm going to continue to read. Uh, but read the first verse. Repeat after we did with me, because I believe he did probably get them. It's absolutely right. He has it in the Amplified, but I'm reading out the King James. So yeah. repeat after me, okay? okay. <clears throat> From that time, From that time, Jesus began to preach. Jesus began to preach. And say, And say, Repent. 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 For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is at hand. All right. I'm going to go down to that 23rd verse, and then we're going over to Matthew 6 and 33, and I want you to read that with me. You don't have to read Matthew 4 and 23 with me, but go over to Matthew 6 and 33 and be prepared to read that with me, okay? Yeah. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. All right, I'm going to Matthew 6 now and 33. You have it? Amen. Amen. Now repeat that after me. But seek, but seek ye first. Ye first. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, and His righteousness, and His righteousness, and all these things, and all these things shall be added unto you. Shall be added unto you. Now say, neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, are you kingdom minded? Are you kingdom minded? Ah, come on, let's go. Are you kingdom minded? Ah, here you go. Say it one more time. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Are you kingdom minded? Are you kingdom minded? Hallelujah. If you got a mind of the king, come on, let's give him some praise. I know it ain't no feeling, but I can feel something breaking here. Amen. You know, sometimes you have to, the Spirit of God begins to move, and uh, depending on where you are, you'll know whether he's moving or, or he's not. Amen. And I feel something. I've been telling people all over, all through the congregation, and just telling people here, with all this stuff going on, I can feel something breaking in the spirit. Yes, yes. That the spirit of the Lord is going to do something great yes. among his people that are hungry. Mm -hmm. yes. Say hungry. Hungry. Hallelujah. Say, he says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. So everybody's not hungry. Yes. But they that are. Yeah. He said, you're going to be filled. They're Amen. The moving of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To God. You know, but you can have two things at one time. Yes. Uh, you can have dryness, mm -hmm. and at the same time, you can have rain, can't you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, if you live in Atlanta, you've seen that, haven't you? Yes. It's raining over there. You're talking to somebody on the phone. It's, it's pouring down rain over here. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, there ain't no rain over here at all. <laughs> that can be the same way in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Depending on what you want. Yes, and how hungry you are for it. Mm -hmm. God could be pouring down rain. Yes. I'm talking about Holy Ghost rain in your life. And somebody else just drives the power box. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What we've been talking, we started off last week talking about the kingdom of God. And, and so, Jesus said when he came on the scene, now remember when he comes on the scene, where is that? He just came out of the wilderness being tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. wow. 
He just showed his authority and power over the devil. His ministry really hadn't started yet. You remember we talked about last week from 12 to 30, he really wasn't doing anything but living. He was always God, so he couldn't help but to be God. But he was living as a carpenter's son. Mm -hmm. He had no reputation for being a miracle worker, healer, or anything. He was a carpenter's son. Matter of fact, at one place he went back to his hometown. Uh, they said, isn't this Joseph's son, the carpenter? Mm -hmm. What is he out here doing this now? We all See, so he lived for basically 18 years as a carpenter's son. Now, when he was around 12 years old, we just bring you up the date when he was around 12 years old, he was there uh, ministering to people that was doctors and lawyers in the word and had great understanding of the law and all that thing, that he was just confounding them. Mm -hmm. And then at, at that age, it seemed like everything cut off. And for the next 18 years, God just kind of kept him silent. Mm -hmm. See, there's a time to come forth. Mm -hmm. And there's a time to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There's a time for your, you, your ministry and for you to come forth, and there's a time, God, I didn't want you to say nothing. Amen. Be quiet and wait your turn. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Glory Amen. to God. Amen. And so Jesus was showing, he, he showed us this. And so when he turns uh, 30, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Father was there. The Son was there. The Holy Ghost was there at his baptism. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord descended on him, upon him like a dove, and the Father spoke from heaven and said, this is my well son, in whom I'm well pleased. And he came up out of that water, the next thing you know, he was in the wilderness, wow. being tempted. And the Bible says, the Spirit of God drove him into the wilderness. Uh -huh. You see, a lot of times, uh, we want to be used of God, but we don't want to have to go where we have to go to get used how we want to be used. And so the, the Bible says he, he was led of the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted or tested by the devil for 40 days. Mm -hmm. And after 40 days and was hungry, the devil came and said, the devil will never come when you're strong. <laughs> That's why I said, why did the devil bother me? He know when to hit you. He know when your mind and you're feeling yes. repressed and depressed and you're feeling like ain't nothing going right. And, and he knows uh, he, he knows exactly when to hit you. He know Jesus is weak. You ain't ate 40 days, ain't drunk nothing, you just you just weak. My Lord. And the first thing he comes and says, offer him bread, and Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone. But now by, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and he comes and offer him, uh, he, he comes and tell me that if you're the son of God, you just, you got, that means you got all power. Just throw yourself down off this high pinnacle and, and God will catch you. He tried to tempt him to do something that he knows is illegal. You don't tempt God. And, and so Jesus said, told totally him, spoke the word to him again, and he came along and said, I'll give you all that I listen to this. He said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you will bow down and worship me, mm -hmm. everything that your physical flesh, the heart's desire, I'll make sure you have it. Mm -hmm. Or you can get some things, but what is it going to cost you? Yeah, my, my, my. And you can, sometimes God will give it to you, but you're, getting it, you're trying to get it before your time. Yeah. And so what is it going to cost you? Okay. But what I want you to notice about this is that when he offered Jesus the kingdoms of this world, Jesus didn't tell him that they ain't his. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> See, all these different systems and things that's this, in this world, I don't care what system it is, there are demonic forces behind yeah. those systems. Yeah. Right. And they may have some good things in them, but exactly. the bottom line is there are demonic forces yeah. driving mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. systems That's right. against the kingdom of God. My God. Yes. Right. That's it. And so he said, I'll give them to you. And Jesus turned around and said to him, he said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And him only shall I serve. And so Jesus said, 
You may have them to offer. Now, you got to understand, the kingdoms of this world are his. The earth is the Lord's. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's, but the systems that's running this world is of the enemy. Amen. That's why they can pass all type of laws that's totally against God's word and don't even consider it. Some things are just natural laws. Mm -hmm. yep. And they pass unnatural laws. Mm -hmm. How can a mind get there? It's something they might have influenced in it. Right. Right. Now, our problem is this. We have to understand what kingdom we're of. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be kingdom minded. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So after this great temptation, Jesus starts his ministry. Mm -hmm. And the thing he starts his ministry off with is repent. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of God is at hand. You see, kingdom means a place where kings rule, a realm. A king is sovereign, have absolute dominion and rule over that realm. Mm -hmm. And then the king's people are taken care of by the king. But they're also subject to the king. Mm -hmm. See, we live in what we call a democracy. Everybody get a voice. Right? Yeah. The problem is with Western system civilization, especially when it comes to understanding and studying God's word, it is not a democracy. In a kingdom, a king tells everybody what to do. Amen. In a democracy, a democracy, you get a voice. The problem is we try to bring that mind with a democracy to the kingdom. Uh, and we think we got a voice. Mm. We think our opinion matters. Mm -hmm. We think what we say, what we feel, it matters. But that's in a democracy. In a kingdom, the only voice that really matters to have authority is the king. king. Yes. <laughs> and so the Church of Israelites understood what it meant to have a king. Mm -hmm. we, grew, we grew up, most of us, without a king. Mm -hmm. If we grew up under a king, we would understand this even more. Yeah. Because when England and not empire ruled, they had their empire spread it all over, and wherever the empire spread it, that king had rule over it. Right. And so Jesus comes because Israel has been without a king for a while now. They've been a kind of a scattered people, and the one that was kind of Operating as king really wasn't a king. And so Jesus comes, he's establishing now his kingdom. And the first thing he says to the, the, these brand new subjects about to come into his kingdom, read it, because they talk about uh, Andrew finds Peter <coughs> and brings him to the king. He says, repent. 
we talked about that word repent. We talked about it. We're going to deal with structure and repent in order more. But he said, repent. What does it mean? He said, if you're going to get with me in my kingdom, you got to change your mindset. You got to change how you think. You got to understand how my kingdom, because every king back in that day operated their kingdom different. So Jesus was saying, you have to repent, change your mind, how you think about this, because my kingdom is different. Yes. If we're going to follow him, that's why I say, don't no happy people come to Jesus and get saved. Because they have to repent. They have to show godly sorrow and have to change their mind and accept what he said about salvation. Not how we feel, how we think, but we have to repent. So we have to change our mind now. Yes. Now that you have come to Christ, uh -huh. you got to change how you think. Now that's why that's he right. spent three chapters Telling them how they ought to treat their neighbor, mm -hmm. treat one another, yeah. treat authority and, pe and people in society. They, they even talk to them about how to treat the enemy. That's what they call the Sermon on the Mount. Read Matthew 5. Yeah. Amen. This is your assignment. Mm -hmm. 6 mm -hmm. and 7. Mm -hmm. It's dealing with you about human relationships. And he's telling them, if you're going to operate in my kingdom, then you have to repent and change the way you think and act towards one another. Amen. He said, now you were taught under the old kingdom that you could hate your enemy. He said, under this kingdom, you got to love your enemy. He said, you were taught under the old kingdom, if you look at a woman and lust after her, you committed sin. That's right. Or you know, well, if you basically you know, if you, you after you, you actually lust after her and went after her, you committed sin. But he said, in this new kingdom, mm -hmm. if you look and think that you want this woman mm -hmm. in an ungodly way, mm -hmm. you already sinned. Yeah, my Lord. What was he saying? In the old kingdom, you had to actually do it. He said, but in this new kingdom, if you think you want to do it, yes. if you think that you want to go to bed with somebody, husband or wife, and you said, I'm thinking about that, he said, you are already sinned against me. He said, now I'm taking you to a higher level. Before, you only got in trouble with God if you did it. He says, and now I'm taking you to a plane that if you think it, so you ain't got to carry out and act like you and carry the act of hating me. God said, if you got it in your heart, even if you're smiling in my face, I see your heart. This is how the new kingdom acts. And the problem with the church is we got an old kingdom mentality. And so we're operating with God wrong, and so we're not getting the right things because we're operating with Him wrong. Yes. That's why He tells us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. Because yes. God says, when, if that thing came out of your mouth, it's really in your heart. It ain't out. I'm sorry. You need to repent. Because. What I'm letting you know when it came up out of your mouth is that that thing is actually in your heart. And so he spends them three chapters and you need to really read and meditate on them because what we call the Beatitudes is a new kingdom attitude. We love to read them. We teach the title of children in Sunday school. But he was talking to us in the kingdom. 
Jesus, Jesus said, the Bible says he sat down and he taught them kingdom principles. And he said this to them. He said, now if you're real, really buy into this and really began to live our kingdom principles, you'll be like light. You'll be like salt. What does light do? Come on, Sunday school. Exposes. Come on, tell me, what, what does light do? It casts out darkness. What else does light do? Exposes. She over here whispering, exposes. It exposes. What else does light do? It allows you to see better. What else does light do? Cleanses. That's good, but we're, we're going to get the salt. That's a good though. <laughs> but what I'm trying to show you, you ever had a power outage? Yes. When all the lights go out. Yeah. What begins to happen? Darkness. 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 Fear. 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 Anxiety, and as soon as the light comes back on, there you go. Comfort. They call us light, right? So we ought to be bringing some comfort. We ought to be showing people a better way. That's right. That's right, Pastor Speak. Oh, come on now, people, people. The reason why the world ain't impressed with us is because we call ourselves Christians, but we're not acting like kingdom people. Come on, Holy Spirit. Yes. When they see us, do they get happy? When we come around, do they feel comfort? Mm. He said, you don't take a light and hide it under a bushel. Uh -huh. See, I can't go through all them verses, but I'm just trying to bring out some of the main stuff. Uh -huh. He said, you don't take a light. If it's a light and hide it under a bushel, you take that light and let everybody see it. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. The reason why some of y'all hiding. My Lord. Because uh -oh. you don't want to be seen. Jesus. Well, but Jesus said the only reason why man loved darkness because their deeds are evil. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So he calls us light. Yeah. And so when you think about all the things that light brings to us, uh -huh. just natural light. Because things that you can't see in the dark you can see in what? In the light. Mm -hmm. But one thing the light don't do is talk. <laughs> it has great influence and never make a noise. We make a lot of noise and have no influence. My God. I love Jesus. People don't care about that. Because they've heard all type of people say that. But light. It moves. It makes a difference. If we cut off all the lights, you'll start looking. You all might be start looking. If I got it pitch black in here, I could take one match. And all eyes would draw to the light. One match! And that's what Jesus was saying. When we are light, when we are kingdom minded, people began to see us. 
even though they don't know what we're all about, they recognize there's something different. But then he said, he brings out two things. Right? Then he said, salt. All right, let's talk about salt, honey boo. What the salt? What are some of the attributes or characteristics of salt? Preservative. Like, slow up, slow up now, because I want to get it. I want people to help everybody here. It, it purifies, that's what you were saying, Sister Rose. Uh -huh. It can it got healing properly. Go ahead, Sister Karen. It adds flavor. It brings flavor. <laughs> it does what? It preserves, it tenderizes. Yes, she said, Thank you. What else does salt do? You see, but there again, another thing that salt don't do is. <laughs> so it's amazing to me that. Jesus could have used something else, but he uses two things that has powerful influence, uh -huh. but makes no noise. You see, we can have powerful influence if we're kingdom-minded and don't have to make a lot of noise. That's why this is what they call Christian nationalism that's trying to bring power, making a bunch of noise. That ain't God. Amen. Because he said the kingdom of God is not in word, it is in power. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You see, so he was telling his people, in order to be in this kingdom, you got to change your mindset. In order to get the benefits of this kingdom, you got to change how you think. So you know what God spends his time on from the time we give our life to Christ? Not salvation. We got saved the day we got saved. It's getting you out of that mindset that you had before you came to. That's why Peter and James and John, they said, Lord, we want to know who's going to be the greatest in your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I know, I know, I know you got the mindset from that old kingdom. He said, I'm going to tell you how to be great in my kingdom. Be a servant. He said, he that is greatest in my kingdom. Now, in their kingdom, your smarts may make you great. Your family may make you great. Your money may make you great. He says, but in my kingdom, the greatest one are that's in my kingdom, they serve people. Yes, yes, yes. We get saved August 11th, and on August the 12th, we want people carrying our boots, our bags. <laughs> you ain't don't even know one chapter of the Bible, but you want people following you in your entourage. Okay. And you want people carrying, and, uh, uh, you won't see you got the wrong mindset. That's it. That's it. Because Jesus said the servant is not greater than the master. And if I have served you, then you are the servant one another. And what's the biggest problem? You know why we don't like we don't why we really don't want to serve one another. Because we talked about it last week. You ain't humble enough. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on now.
See, because it takes something to humble yourself. Just, you ain't getting nothing out of it. But what? Serving this person. Preach, preach, preach. If I can see that I'm getting something out of it, I can do it. But I, all I'm getting out of it is doing you good. So Jesus says, you've got to change your mindset. If you're going to advance and move in my kingdom, then you have to have a servant's heart. And so if you don't like serving, you ain't going nowhere. So you have to change your mind about how you look at this. Because Jesus said, he came to serve. Matter of fact, he took off being God for a minute. Though he could never stop being God, he took off when he came into his body and took on the form of a servant. Okay. So we have to get it in our minds if we're going to be kingdom-minded that we have to change our mindset. Now look at Matthew 6.33. Now this will make a little bit more sense to you now. Because he was not just talking about stuff. He was talking about our whole mindset. Now what does Matthew 6.33, you ready to read it now? All right, I'm going to repeat it. You may be upset. But seek, but seek ye, first ye first the kingdom. The kingdom. Now you have to know what kingdom he's talking about, right? Yes. He's talking about this kingdom that he talked about and over there in Matthew 4 when he told them to repent. Because I'm about to give you a brand new mindset. Now when you get this mindset, uh -huh. when you start thinking like this, when you start acting and carrying him on like this, and when you begin to do things like this, now, see, most of us take Matthew, and we're just dealing with the, the, the part around from the Matthew 6 and 19 to 30, when they're talking about things. Yes. But remember, this is a, see, it's broken down in chapter, but this is one message. And in this message, he's telling them, what it takes to get from the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So he says, seek ye what? Mm -hmm. First. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't seek the kingdom, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. This is what he said. If you ain't got a kingdom mindset, all the other stuff that you're doing don't matter That's to it. me. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh. So he establishes with them, go with to God. He said, Seek first the kingdom. If you're going to do anything for God, then his kingdom has to come first. Yeah, it got to be. He's the king. He tells you how things done. So when you seek that more than you seek anything. Before you seek a marriage, before you seek a job, before you seek money, he says, seek first the kingdom. Hallelujah. You got to get in this king's realm. Yes, thank you, Jesus. He says the kingdom, and then he said, and his what? Righteousness. Hallelujah. And his right righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. His righteousness. Yes, yes. His righteousness. Yes. So then, God has a way of doing things. And other kingdoms have a way of doing things. God said, this is how things operate in my kingdom. So if you seek me first and my Right way of doing things. Mm -hmm. 
If you do the things the way that God wants you to do them, now we can get the scripture, scripture straight. It ain't just about stuff. It's about who you are, how you think, how you handle things, how you deal with people. All of this is talking about when he says Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. Now I can get things. Now that's why I can understand the scripture. Before I call him, mm -hmm. he'll answer me. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't say I even had to pray, did he? Mm -hmm. He said, if I seek first the kingdom of God and his right way of doing things, oh, all these things shall be added. I'm telling you, you can walk in such a way with God that you ain't got to be praying about things all the time. You can spend your time praising and worshiping and magnifying God and things are just being added. Yes. 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 It just adds. It just, it just attaches itself to you. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. It'll come looking for you. You talking like you looking for a husband, a husband will come looking for you. Uh -huh. Glory to God. You looking for money to find you. Glory to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Promotions are fine. When you get God way of doing things and you get kingdom minded, things find you. You don't have to spend it. That's why he told them. Yes. What you doing? Tell them about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Huh? You know why? Because they ain't kingdom minded. He was saying, all these things are Gentile, are other kingdoms seek out. So then, if you worry about money, I tell you, where your mind is. Right. You can talk all your spirituality you want. That's right. You ain't came to mind. Right. Well, Pastor, you telling me not to worry? Yeah. yeah. You telling me not to fear? Yeah. That's the, see, if you know who the king is, you know that you don't have to fear anything. Because his kingdom is superior to all kingdoms. Now look. He says, my kingdom is not meat and it's not drink. <coughs> he says, that's what other kingdoms have to do to enjoy themselves. Yeah. But my kingdom is righteousness. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Peace. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. See, two kingdom people ain't at odds with one another. Mm -hmm. See, when you get all full of strife and envy and all that jealousy and all that stuff, you don't got out of your kingdom mind. Yes. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, preach, Pastor. Oh, yeah. Because kingdom-minded people, they line up with the principles of the king. Yes. And Jesus said this, a house divided against itself cannot stand. My God. That's why I said when you get structure, comes power. And when you are divided, you can't stand. That's in your individual house in the church house, or whatever. When it's division, there is no power. Look what Jesus said that. He was cast out of devil. And they said, you cast out devils by devils. Jesus said, that's an impossible thing. Now, he was bringing out a couple of things. Glory to God. He said, devils don't fight each other. That's right. That's right. All right. All right. Come on. Wait. Man, man. Wait. Man, man. He said, devils get together and they'll come at you one at one. Uh, the, the demon of doubt, the demon of fear, That's the right. demon of discouragement, the demon of anxiety, and they all come at you at the same time. They won't sit back and fight. 
fight each other. But we as children of God, we are fight each other. That's because we're not people. Oh my God. But these are a lot of them. Poverty will come. Sickness will come. Doubt comes. All coming at the same time, telling you, God ain't gonna work it out. God ain't got all power. God can't fix it. God can't do it. Never is a liar. It ain't none of them people saying. Oh yes, he's saying. All of them saying the same thing. Oh yes, he's a liar. Come on, preach. Now you're full of doubt, full of fear, full of cares. Uh, yeah. Got anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. They was all working together on you. Yeah. And Jesus said, you got to understand how the kingdom of darkness works. They don't work against one another. He said, there will be, remember I told you guys, wait for a structure, but structure there's power. Mm -hmm. You see, they're structured and constructed in a way that they all work together to get the job done. Mm -hmm. All right. And so then they become powerful against you. Mm -hmm. Not that they have power over you, but they come against you. Against you. Yes. But when you're kingdom minded, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. When you're, and, and when you're kingdom minded, and you get with other kingdom minded people. Yeah. One can put a thousand to them. Yeah. It don't take a whole lot of us. Yeah. He said one can put a thousand to like, and two can put two to the other. When kingdom minded people get together, it changes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's Hallelujah. All you got to have is another kingdom minded people on the yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. I ain't talking about a religious person. I'm talking about another kingdom minded yeah. person. And all hell is breaking loose on that job. And you get together with another kingdom minded people. Yeah. And he said, we're two or three are together. Yeah. See why there's not a lot of power mm -hmm. in the church? Mm -hmm. Everybody got their own little kingdom. My God. Come on, come on. It don't yeah, work right. like that in God's great. kingdom. Okay. God said, if I'm going to throw in my kingdom, first of all, I got to be king. Ain't, no, yeah. ain't, ain't, ain't but one person on this throne. Yeah. Everybody else is subjects. Yeah. Following our orders. So if you ain't following orders, you ain't in the structure, what are you doing? I tell you, you are. You're renegading. You ain't going. So I said, what's that? Absent without leave. God didn't give you permission, so you ain't got no business being there. Well. And we got too many red grade Christians. You see, just like Satan can't work divided against itself, the body of Christ is not effective or divided against itself. You see, when the fingers look like that, they look all look different on like that. Yeah. Huh? All the same. They're all together. Yep. When you ball them all like that, you can do a bunch. Hmm. All right now. All right. I said you can do a bunch. All right now. Right. Come on. The most you can do with this is slap. That ain't what all, that ain't as much power, is it? Right. But when you ball it up, yeah. you can do a punch. And when we are together, we can throw a punch into the kingdom of darkness. And that's why Jesus said, the very gates of hell can't 
can come against us. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. You see, so God's kingdom has to line up with the king. And then it gives all and all of us nothing but subjects to the king. And he gives his subjects a sign. Yes, yes. Now, George is a football state up in closing in a couple of minutes. I don't understand why they say the quarterback has so many wins. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He won so many Super Bowls. He won that game. But if you take away the line, them three and four hundred pound beast up front that he stands behind that gives him time to throw the ball. Them super fast receivers that he has to throw the ball to if they can't catch. If he's playing the game by himself, then you can have the worst team in the world and he's going to lose every time. Mm -hmm. He has no protection. Yeah. He has no one to catch it. You see? The same way about Christ. If we're playing the game by ourselves, mm -hmm. And you think you're going to have great victories? Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Yeah. If you think God's going to do this great, fabulous work in you, independent of his other subjects, that's not going to happen. All right. The way it happens and flows is that when everybody knows their place, mm -hmm. see, some of y'all too young to remember this, but you remember, Tony, when the Dutch just said, you need to know your place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to stay in a what? Child's place. place. Yes. Right. Yeah. You know what they were saying? You ain't mature enough to enter here. Right. You need to stay there. That's your, That's your place. place. Yeah. There will come a time that you are mature enough to be here. Mm -hmm. But right now, you're not so to what? Stay mm -hmm. in right. your place. Mm -hmm. And we got a whole bunch of people in the body of Christ just out of place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want great miracles. But we ain't in place for great miracles. We want great deliverance, but we ain't in place for great deliverance. We want God to pour out abundance and just pour out abundance all over. Let, let me tell you, there was a time, there were times and seasons when God's people got with one mind and one accord. The Bible said Peter was just walking. He was trying to heal nobody. Mm -hmm. He just walking. Mm -hmm. Taking a walk. And just a shot. Casting over people. Yeah. People get delivered. Yeah. Set free. Because yeah. people are in place. Yeah. When everybody was filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said they were with one mind. Yeah. It ain't hard for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's that people... Well, that's a plan for them. I'll be all right, get out of here. Mine's all scattered. Mm -hmm. People need to be delivered. Yeah. You think about the next five minutes, you don't hurry up, I gotta get out of here. Mine's out of place. Yeah. See, because if you cared about that person yes, 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 like you cared about yourself, on, you wouldn't want nobody to leave until you got your help. Wow. Yeah. 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 
Am I right? So why are you willing to desert another brother or sister and they ain't got their help? Why don't you stay and pray until God breaks through for them? So you see when I talk about kingdom-minded people and power and structure and order, if there is no structure, there is no power. Because God's kingdom is structured. Do you think the devil learned how to structure his kingdom because he was smart? No. At one time, he was in heaven. And he saw how orderly everything was ran. Come on, man. He saw how perfectly, he said, the cherubim, they just worship. The cherub, the cherubim, the cherubim, they just worship. There's some angels that just, just, just a sign that 24 hours a day, all they say is holy, holy, holy. 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 Yes. They ain't worried about who they're going to work. They, yes. Their job is yes. to worship holy, yes. Yes. holy. holy. And, and, and heaven is just orderly. Mm. That's it. And the only time, one time that God order is when some angel called Lucifer, yeah. got to thinking that he had a higher order than God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he got out of order, he got kicked out because God cannot stand rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. He told Michael, kick him out. Because we got to have order here. Right. And so when Satan was kicked into the earth, he set up his kingdom. His, kingdom. Yeah. his order. Yes, he How he's going to do things. Yes, God's order is righteousness, peace, joy. God's order is I came that you might have life yeah. and have it more abundantly. But Satan's order is to rob, to kill, and destroy. That's how it's the order day. First, strip them. They kill his spirit. They ain't got no joy. They ain't got no peace. They get them so messed up that now you can bring absolute destruction to their lives. So that's why he gets you to want to go against God's word. And you keep thinking that you can go against God's word, but get kingdom results. I don't care how much you confess out your mouth. And I don't care how much you do other things. If God said this is right, and you doing what he's all wrong, you are the order. So you ain't seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So why should he add to you? All right now. What benefit is it to God by blessing somebody that ain't a subject or ain't acting like one? My, my, my. Well, just ask yourself this and we're going home. How do you feel when your child gets rebellion in your home? I mean, if you got one, or if they're still in the home, or they, at one time they're in the home. Did it make your home comfortable? Huh? Y'all scared of y'all children? <laughs> Don't know. Going home, but one time she ain't talking to you on what daddy I said. You ain't? No. Man, you ain't gonna never talk no more. <laughs> Be cool. It's my home. I provide everything. My food, my water, my heat, my gas, my light, my room. But you ain't talking to me. But you ain't talking to me. Oh, God. So she came. 
Because she out of order. But I'm going to teach her a lesson. So after about two or three days, she comes, Daddy, I need. I said, no, 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 no. Okay. There you go. There you go. You out of order. You out of order. Me and you ain't talking. Okay. So you can't ask me for anything until you get back what? Yeah. In order. And what does that order get back in order mean? Repent. To change your mind. To yeah, repent. Right. So she said, Daddy. <laughs> she had to humble herself because you can't have my stuff out of order. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get my best out of order. You ought to feel good that I'm making you stay in my house. Because you out of order. But because I'm a merciful daddy, yeah. <laughs> I didn't kick you out the house. Yeah. But how about God? Yeah. We get our order on our shoulders, but then we think we can act yeah. right, think right, go where we want to do, do everything we want to do. Then we want to say, Daddy, can I have? You out of order. No, you can't have. I'll let you stay in the house, but that vest. If you're willing and obedient, uh -huh. now you can go to Whataburger with me. That's right. <laughs> but if you have to order me to stay at home, now we can get a Whataburger. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Exactly. Oh, so, what do you think? Yeah. Our Heavenly Father thinks. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. you're right. That's when good. our life is out of order. That's good. Yes. And we begging Him for things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Asking for things. What's, what's, <laughs> what's it going to motivate Him to do? Repent. Turn away from it. You repent. <laughs> In the army, they call it whiskey. And on the fact about power. That I means you're going to I ain't marching the whole time. But them soldiers there, when you're going to miss a record, they, they give a command. Mm -hmm. right. About, about faith. faith. I can't do it no more. But you spin on that, and then you change. That's right. And you go in another direction. In a totally different direction. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Some of y'all need to do an about. Thank you, Jesus. Faith. Uh -huh. You need to repent. Mm -hmm. yes. To get this kingdom mindset. Oh, right. So that everything that the king has for you. Yes. You see, this the king must do. If he gives you an assignment, then he has to give you provisions mm -hmm. for the assignment. Oh, right. It's not your responsibility mm -hmm. to make provisions for the assignment, it's the king's responsibility to make provision for the assignment because it's his kingdom. So that's why I tell you, I don't sit back and think about money or think about this or think about that because it is the king's responsibility to take care of me. That's right. That's right. Wherever I got to have, it's a king's responsibility yeah. to make sure I have it. All right. That's why that scripture, y'all need to stop claiming that my God shall supply. But he's talking about kingdom people. Yeah. Mm. That's it. Kingdom minded. Mm -hmm. yes. Read Philippians the fourth chapter when, God, when Paul began to talk to him about when he made that scripture declaration. They had met certain criteria. Mm -hmm. Come on, say it to you. Hallelujah. God wants us kingdom minded. Yes. Amen. He wants us to affect this world. Yes. He wants us to be the difference. Yes. <laughs> Not part of the problem. Right. The world got enough problems. That's right. They got enough strife. Yeah. It's enough craziness going on. Yeah. Yeah. 
enough killing, murder, and mayhem. You don't want to walk in the streets, church, after you've been beat down. I mean, you've been going through it all week. You don't know what people. But when you walk in the house of God, we need to be. Right. Yeah. One mind. One accord. So that if somebody in the kingdom needs something, yeah. or someone that has not been born again into the kingdom come in and need something, yeah. there is power. In the kingdom mm -hmm. to get the job done. That's right. Mm -hmm. But if we're all scattered minded, mm -hmm. then the job doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. So, you were in the military or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Tony, Dr. Gary, JP, Brad, was out here. I was in the military. Who else was in the military? Oh, the Piper. You see, one thing we learned, they would learn us up. And one of the first things that they taught us in basic training was to get in step. Get in step. Am I right? That's it, yeah. Got to be in step. I didn't know how to march. <laughs> but they would teach you to get in step. And then when if you got out of step, they would, you would have to, then you know how to. That's a little step. Change step. Change step. And get right back in. Yes. They didn't let you just be out of step. Mm -mm. And, and, and what they would do sometimes, because they were teaching us to work as a team. Yeah. Someone may have messed up, uh -huh. but the team suffered. That's right. Because they was teaching us to bear one another. Uh -huh. That's right. Don't leave a soldier behind. Yeah. We're the only one to kill our wounded and say let them. No, but they they told us. Matter of fact, now all these plans, I believe that somehow they got them inspired from this because they had what they call a buddy plan. Right. If you went somewhere, you took your buddy with you because y'all were stronger together than apart. But as a unit, they called. And then there was a platoon, a brigade. You see, the bigger it got, more power we came. You may be able to pick up what, 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 what was that? Unit? But if you've got a brigade of soldiers, Italian brigade, but in that brigade, now listen to me, and I got to go. They had a supply unit, mm -hmm. they had cooks. They had mechanics. They had truck drivers. They had communications. Everybody was not on the front line. But the front line could win because all the other areas were functioning. They learned something from Napoleon. He was a great conqueror, but he went to war. He had a mighty army. But when he lost it, is that he didn't get the supply line. He didn't have any supplies. So when the soldiers ran out of their needs, it was over. All the enemy had to do was wait them out. See, I supply something to you. You supply something to me. When we're all together, there's power. Yeah. Yeah. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to change our minds. To become kingdom minded. To be transformed by the renewing of our mind. To get this kingdom mindset, God. That we, you have given us power to have dominion. Because our king has conquered. He's the king of kings. And the Lord of lords. Yes. He has conquered every kingdom of this world. Yes. And we're part yes. of that kingdom. Yes. So help us, God, to renew our lives. In Jesus' name.